So our last group is innovations for social and tech for good. So among um, this group, there are eight um, female founders, but today you will hear uh, seven of them uh, pitching their stories. Some of them are social enterprise and some of them are tech company purpose driven, but they all have a mission. It's for the greater good for our society and our environment. So we will invite uh, every one of them, um, well, seven of them to tell you their story and their innovation. So I will stop sharing now. So the first one up, we will have Eleanor from Hayes to tell you about how she can use AI to protect child labor. Can you, you see can. my screen okay? Yes. Sorry, I'm recovering from COVID, so hopefully I won't have a coughing fit. Uh, but I apologize if I do, anyway. Um, so hi everyone, it's great to be here. Um, I'm Eleanor Harry, the CEO and founder of the multiple award-winning Hayes State of Changing Child Labour. I founded Hayes in 2020 after a decade of working with child labour with a mission to create scalable visibility into global supply chains so companies can use a data and AI driven approach to tackle child labour's root causes. Since then, we have processed over 1.8 million rows of data and our analysis has reached over 40,000 farming communities. We have worked with a FTSE top 10 company to analyze their supply chain data systems to detect root causes of child labor. We've received over 50K, 55K in grants and investment to date and have a sales pipeline of over 1.5 million pounds. If a child labor case is found, it poses a serious financial and reputational threat to companies. US companies alone lost half a trillion dollars to ESG controversies from 2015 to 2019. Currently, there are 160 million children in child labor, equating to one in 10 children globally. And 70% of those child laborers, 70% of that child labor occurs in agriculture and raw commodities, and most commonly in the bottom tiers of the supply chain, where companies have little systematic visibility, making child labor an ever increasing visible risk. To solve this problem for companies, we have three solutions based on increasing, monitoring, and maintaining visibility into the supply chain. The core of our products are our community data sets, which we build using state-of-the-art AI. Our Athlon product give com gives companies deep insight into the root causes of child labor. Our follow-on AI-driven assisted auditing tool is an end-to-end -end app and platform-based solution to ensure supply chain auditing is objective, cost-effective, and timely. And finally, our child labor index benchmarks the world's largest companies on their child labor performance. We are an award-winning team encompassing experts in social and data science with a particular focus on the application of AI to SDG challenges. We are also passionate about supporting women in data and technology and have won multiple awards for our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're currently in a pre-seed investment round raising 500 with nearly half of that pledged to complete building our two new solutions. We're also looking for pioneering companies to conduct pilot projects with, and companies willing to participate in market research and user testing of our products. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna, for sharing with us very powerful innovation. And please um, do reach out, do um, tell your client, tell your networks about this. And so we are able to prevent child labor um, from any industry or any supply chain. Right, so next, um, it's um, also about the children. So Victoria, please uh, do share screen with us and tell us about your story. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, did you know that hundreds of thousands of children in developing countries die annually from vaccine preventable diseases like measles and rubella? I'm sure you, you didn't know that, but this is primarily because mothers are given paper vaccination cards and these cards are easily lost or defaced and that makes it hard to keep track of what vaccines children are taking. That means that they can easily skip the vaccines fall ill and die. There's also the case of displaced or uh, refugee families. So you have mothers on the move, moving from community to community, making it hard to keep track of their children's routine immunization. Now, 
to solve this problem, when I worked for UNICEF in 2015, um, I thought there had to be a better way to do this and children shouldn't be dying for no reason. So if you look to the video, um, just on the right or my left, yeah. So it just shows you, it's a necklace that I designed, a fashionable necklace that doubles as a routine immunization record keeper. It's very simple, but it's an effective solution. All that's needed is any kind of pen to ink mark the vaccine grows and then to write the date of the vaccine, the date the vaccines were administered and the date for the next um, vaccine the visit. So it's simple, easy to use. And um, yeah, so the unique selling points are that it's customizable because each country has a slightly different vaccine schedule. So we can customize it for each country. It has unique identification numbers. It caters for mothers with multiple births and it's reusable. We're thinking of the environment so mothers can continue to wear it and even after their children complete routine immunization. I designed this product with an amazing team. Um, I have two uh, immunization specialists, one from UNICEF and one from the World Health Organization who advises and helped with the design of the product and two um, industrial designers from Morama who helped bring this product to life. So our target is to work with governments and international aid organizations as well as the private sector. So we retail the product to them at $5 a unit. They buy and then they give it to the mothers for free. So for private sector, we can work with them as part of their corporate social responsibility projects, so social impact um, and projects. Now our next steps, we're looking to pilot in South Sudan and the DRC. So we're trying to raise 24,000 pounds in corporate sponsorships or partnerships. So if you can help us with this, that would be fantastic. Um, so 12,000 for each country. And we just ask that you join us as we try to reduce infant mortality one necklace at a time. Thank you. And please do reach out to us. Thank you very much. Um, that um, I think the, uh, this, this innovation says also try to demonstrate that in CISO we do very much care not only the environmental impact as well as the social impact so please do reach out if you are able to help any of them a bit further um, please do do so so next um great I'm going to um introduce Iris yeah Iris uh, and AI she is going to share their innovation with you and please pay attention because this one is a dive into technology side of things but we all know and um, Iris feel free to share screen while I carry on talking and um, while we all know AI use it's very useful in many many different space but do we know AI can make a mistake as well so how can what can we do if AI will also make mistakes or you know is there any way we can ensure those mistakes were mitigated so now Iris will share with you about their innovation. So Iris, um, over to you. Great, it's full screen now, yep. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, lovely to meet everyone here. Uh, so, oh, sorry, just... Um, have you heard of headline news uh, such as Zillow has abandoned its home trading algorithms with over $500 million loss due to AI visibility issue? Apple Card was investigated for gender discriminations in their lending algorithms. So technology can be used to automate decisions, but problems like explainability and unintended bias can cost businesses as well as our society. So this is a huge problem, not only affects um, the over 3.3 billion pounds market of the UK fintechs and marketing techs alone, this affects every single one of us as a person being evaluated uh, by these AI algorithms. So Raluca is our uh, CTO with 10 years of experience as a data scientist working with a variety of corporate clients. Uh, I'm Iris, the CEO, and originally come from the finance background um, with seven years experience building and scaling a successful uh, tech startup prior to ETIC. And the rest of our techni technical team all have uh, 10 plus years experience in the field. So together, we build the ETIC platform to um, help companies to test and monitor their predictive models. So the platform can be licensed on a monthly basis and it consists of four pillars of offering, uh, mainly used by data teams. So it's flexible and customizable and allow you to quickly and easily run tests on your data and machine learning algorithms. So you can identify and correct issues to ensure compliance and also mitigate unintended biases. 
So our um, products has helped um, so far a fintech to avoid stereotypes and better identify vulnerable customers in their AI banking and risk assessments. Um, and so we've helped them to reduce their development cost and time by 25 and also 80% uh, respectively. And with also a um, investment uh, software, we've reduced their gender bias by 40% in their risk assessment, so they could better um, manage their fund allocation and to drive higher investor satisfaction. So some other use cases we can help, help companies um, and also ourselves as consumers are to achieve, for example, uh, fairer AI recruitment selections, uh, better shopping recommendations, fairer loans and insurance decisions, uh, and more optimized stock and prediction um, and production predictions uh, to reduce wastage. So ultimately, uh, we can help companies to um, use richer data and build uh, uh, deeper algorithms in a more robust and responsible manner. So in terms of achievement to date, uh, we have raised over 800K of funding on R2. It's easy to integrate uh, both on-premises and also available on AWS Marketplace. And so we're currently also signing agreements with two large uh, UK corporate clients. So uh, last but not least, we're very excited to make an impact on the world of responsible AI um, and are looking for uh, more opportunities to grow. So if you're interested in um, uh, joining the journey and support or work with us, then please get in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aris, for sharing with us. And I just see in the Q&A, um, Chris, Chris, Chris Gibbs from Cambridge Enterprise give a high price to all our staff's uh, high quality pitch. Thank you very much, Chris. That does make me feel really good. And I'm sure that really encouraged all our staff because they practice really, really hard. Right. So next, um, I'm going to introduce Helen from Antim. She is going to tell you her innovation and yes, later. And in it, and there's a team in it. So you might can you might be able to guess what she's going to share with you. So Helen, uh, remember to unmute yourself and the floor is yours. Amazing. Thank you very much. Um, hi, I'm Helen Ma, founder of Antim. Antim is the Airbnb for logistics. I remember a day during the lockdown when four delivery vans dropped four delivery parcels at my house from the same online retailer. Then my son dragged me to watch his ants. As I was watching those ants, I saw the way they work together as a community to move things around. This is how Ant Team started, hence the name Ant Team. Ant Team uses AI to unlock the logistic capacity within our communities so that we can reduce our carbon footprint, air pollution, and the traffic congestion. Our mission is to unlock every single cubic inch of available logistic capacity. So the next slide we will talk about, that's the problem we are trying to solve. First, the transport sector remains the highest emitter of CO2 at the same time with the now generation demanding same day faster delivery. And the you and me, we are driving our cars around with our car boot empty. So the next slide, I will talk about the market opportunity. So the market opportunity for Antimes is massive, but at the same time, you, if you look at in the UK, that we drive cars and taxi around every year for 280 billion miles. Next slide, please. Attraction. So in 2021, we won the TRIC award from the Department for Transport under the decarbonization. For the second year, we won the TRIC award again, and this expanded the vision of Antim in terms the Department for Transport see us as a part of solution for the future of freight. And myself won the Women in Innovation Award from Interview UK. We are starting an ant movement, and we hope you will join the movement. Whether you are investors, angel and VC investors who are looking for making an impact through your investment, or if you're businesses, 
working to work with retailers or logistics companies to conduct trial in terms of we want to be your last mile green delivery partner. Of course, we are always looking for expanding our ecosystems. If you're looking for any community projects, any organizations that you want to be part of Antim's ecosystem, please contact me through my email. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Helen, for sharing with us the inspirations from the Ant movement. So you never know where the inspiration could come and will help um, our innovations, you know, starting that seed. Right. So next, we are going to invite uh, Joe Johan from Geeky to tell us a bit more about their impact-driven business and innovation. Joe, please feel free to share screen. And um, yes. Oh, thank you so much. And it's wonderful to be here. And it's been wonderful to be on, on the, the um, accelerator as well. It's really a wonderful experience. Um, so I'm going to give you a very brief intro to Geeky. We are a B Corporation and a social enterprise. And we set up in 2017 to help individuals take action within their own life on climate change because around 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions actually come from us, from people, from households, because we drive our cars, we fly aeroplane, in aeroplanes, we use gas in our boilers, um, and there's huge potential for individuals to be part of the solution to climate change. And we work with companies and organizations who want to engage their people and embed sustainability within their culture um, to help individuals really be involved in the solutions to climate change. Now, we do that through a um, software system, a web app, um, soon to have a native app, um, which helps people understand, measure, and reduce their personal carbon footprint, and then team up together and track their collective achievements and have campaigns, uh, competitions, leaderboards, et cetera, to, to drive engagement. We also run alongside that an engagement program to help people really understand um, why this is such an important issue, to learn more about it and to continue to be engaged and learn about it on an ongoing basis. And why do people do this above and beyond uh, the fact that we have a climate crisis that we're facing that we need to deal with? Well, there's a growing energy of people who want to take action within companies and are looking to their employer to do it. More and more companies have commitments and they need to bring their people with them. And recruitment and retention is increasingly challenging for companies, particularly those who do not have strong commitments to sustainability. So it, it, we find that it's there. It's an increasingly um, popular growth area, um, just like health in the workplace was five or ten years ago. Mental health now, sustainability engagement is becoming increasingly popular. Now, why? Because we have to half emissions this decade to keep temperature rise under one and a half degrees. Um, we've seen that the effects of climate change in the UK just last week, and unless we tackle this issue, it will get very significantly worse for all of us. Um, and this is what we can do individually. We uh, worked with Imperial College to produce research looking at what is what can we do as individuals and actually just by swapping and switching and changing our changing the way that we do things, we can cut our own personal carbon footprints by 75%. And we can do that by finding steps and changes and, and um, all sorts of lifestyle tweaks that can reduce our personal carbon footprint. And that's what we help people to do at Geeky. And these are just some of the organizations that we work with. Um, we work with people all over the world because it is a global challenge and we need a global solution. And if, if you're tempted to find out what your own personal carbon footprint is, you can do so here on Geeky Zero. There's an entirely free platform for everybody. And if you want to engage your, your colleagues to do so, then please do get in touch with me. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's very educational. And we hear it's also very inspiring and, and helps people um, in all sorts of different ways beyond the, the, the initial benefits of, of reducing their carbon footprint. Thank you very much, Joe. And thank you for sharing Geeky with us. 
And as, as a lot of you could see, um, a lot of our staff has also been through uh, other credible uh, accelerated programs such as Tech Nation or, you know, Innovate UK funding. So, you know, they really need more backup from uh, our audience. So please do support and help. We will invite Lisa from Taza to um, tell you about her idea. And this is also her personal passion, the things that she want to do to change the world. So okay. as, uh, Lisa, I will hand over to you. Your slides uh, are yeah, on. Okay. What was happening? And Caroline, yeah, Caroline, Caroline if you got me. Um, thank you. I am Lisa Stafford, CEO and founder of Tazar. We are building a world that uses, reuses and disposes of electronics sustainably. Have you ever considered upgrading your smartphone to a used one? Only three of out of 10 of us have considered this and I have, considered, I have experienced the uncertainty of purchasing a used phone off Facebook Marketplace. This photo depicts the situation that I was in when I was making the transaction. And I had a lack of trust and transparency in the seller, the condition and the history of the product before buying it. If only we had a trusted format that could give us all of this information beforehand. Tazar certifies and traces the condition and provenance of smart electronics with a digital product passport. This software solution is for electronic brands and manufacturers such as Samsung, electronic retailers such as Curry's and the electronic aftermarket where we would act as a certification product. We trace goods from finished product to end of life. We provide a traceable electronic record that gives information on the ownership and the prov provenance of the device as well as the condition. We store the data securely both of personal and model information, and this promotes accountable waste management at end of life. Why now? Well, there's a global e-waste crisis. Um, this is set to overtake the fashion waste crisis by 2030. There are upcoming regulations on digital product passports, which will mean that all electronic products will have to have an electronic record from point of purchase, and we are also addressing the tech metal and material shortage, which is preventing us from building clean technology products. We are looking for angel and pre-seed investors for our next round, which is 250K. And we're looking for collaborators to pilot this technology in 2023 in the retail and manufacturing space. And we're also looking for advisors in media, electronics, recycling, and the regulations. If you're interested in Tazar and would like to learn more about us, please contact me at lisa at tazarit.com. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa, for sharing with us. I remember when Lisa first, uh, in a kickoff session, her first thing she asked everyone is, um, have anyone considering um, using a secondhand phone? I I'm very tempted to ask this question, but we are going to stay on time. So, um, Caroline, are you ready to, um, yeah, come again? I would like to begin by thanking Viola Jordan, Claire Wang, and the Cambridge Institute of Sustainability Leadership for the opportunity to join the program and a phenomenal cohort of women. So my name is Caroline Friel and I am the founder, co-founder of Ample. Um, Ample is an impact fintech connecting sustainability and payments in order to drive responsible consumption. We have built a proprietary rating framework to assess brand social and environmental impact. Our mission is to simplify sustainability for consumers. And we do this by pulling together complex and disparate data to distill across three pillars. These visual pillars are planet, people, and principles. And this allows us to increase uh, scalability and coverage by integrating ESG data and supplementing it with um, more granular sustainability data. We aim to unlock sustainability as a tool for brand recognition, for loyalty, and regeneration. 
Ample is paving a path to sustainable and responsible consumption by empowering consumers to use their purchasing power to affect change. By revenue sharing, we help uh, people to rebalance their footprint, to do good, and to support organizations cleaning up the planet, bridging social inequalities, and advocating, advocating for greater public good. To date, we have attracted over 400 leading retailers and some familiar brands to offer impact to our customers. We are working together to fuel collaborative and regenerative action with every transaction. We have a talented, passionate and diverse team, all driven by the desire to contribute to a better world and to create positive impact at scale. We have been incredibly fortunate to attract a brilliant group of advisors comprising of experts in sustainability and financial technology. At the beginning of the year, we closed a pre-seed round, attracting an esteemed group of executives and angel investors. Um, we forecast another raise in Q1 2023, and we are always interested in speaking with retailers, financial institutions, and potential investors. So please reach out and contact us um, if you would like to explore avenues of collaboration or how to create impact. Um, thank you, and I look forward to connecting. <laughs>